this time they're calling it a special military operation. We have confirmed information that more than 12,000 Russian soldiers have been killed, 389 tanks, 1,249 APCs, 77 fighter jets, 90 helicopters. I'm convinced that among you there are former military people. Just ask them whether in history there have ever been such special military operations that would have such consequences for a country that initiates this kind of military operation. Those flows of lie and hatred that are disseminated by the Russian media, the Russian propaganda, have to be stopped. Russian fakes have to be stopped that have to try, that are trying to establish those lies in the Russian society. I can tell you that Russia and President Putin have started a full-scale war in the center of Europe that can become a third world war. Starting 2014, Ukraine has asked not to bring the Russian delegation to the parliamentary assembly, not to bring them back. Today, the Russian delegation has stopped its work with the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, and I'm sure that this just reflects Putin's wish to avoid punishment and to restrict, to put an end to thousands of complaints and applications by Ukrainian citizens for all the crimes that he and his people have committed against Ukraine for the past eight years. But we all know that punishment for genocide and terrorism cannot be avoided. And we have to be tough in our response. We demand that a decision is approved to immediately oust Russia from the Council of Europe. The ones who definitely support this non-provoked and unjustified aggression cannot stay in the single European family where human life is the highest value. Dear ladies and gentlemen, Ukraine is on fire. Hundreds of houses have been built. We're short of water, of light, of heat for millions of our people. We need to join our efforts, not only to protect, to defend Ukraine, but to defend all of Europe today. We need to stop the aggression until a nuclear disaster comes in, until all of Europe is on fire. So, of course, we are asking, we are demanding to close the skies over Ukraine, to close the sky for the sake of the millions of people in Ukraine, for the sake of European and world security. And in the end, I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart to all the neighboring countries, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Moldova, Lithuania, and other countries of Europe for their support, support that they have given to our women and children, to all those who, on a temporary basis, have to look for shelter in your countries and those who have found shelter, who have found warmth, hospitality, attention, all these values that our joint, that our common European family is rich with. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your solidarity, for your position, the solidarity that you are showing us. Glory to Ukraine, glory to free and democratic Europe. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Prime Minister. This assembly is not used to loud applause. Therefore, I think you can take this unanimous applause of this assembly as a sign of our support for the government of Ukraine, 
its authorities and especially the citizens of uh, your now beleaguered country. I thank you from the bottom of my heart that you took the time to brief you under very difficult circumstances, as we are all aware, about what is happening in Ukraine and the need that international solidarity, which is now seen and shown, has to remain and has to be strengthened. In this uh, meeting of the Parliamentary Assembly, we will now examine the question posed to us by the Committee of Ministers whether Article 8 of our statute, written down already in 49, has to be further uh, applied, which could lead to the exclusion of a member state of the Council of Europe for the first time ever in modern history. As you pointed out quite clearly, there is not only that, we, that the Russian army has crossed the borders of Ukraine in an illegal and an aggressive way, but it also has crossed the red lines of this organization. And that will not be without consequences. The precise measure, size of these consequences, as said, will be debated now and in the, in the, in, in the, in the coming hours and tomorrow. May I again thank you. May I wish you strength and wisdom and courage. Uh, you have to be aware that not only the Council of Europe, but I think the vast majority of the international community stands with you and stands up against aggression by the biggest state on earth who has shown to understand so little about international law and civilization. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. Stay safe and sound, and we wish you, your government, and your people well. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is the communication from the Committee of Ministers to the Assembly, presented by Mr. Benedetto Della Vedova, Under Secretary of State of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Italy. This will be followed by questions to Mr. Della Vedova. Now, dear colleagues, it's my pleasure to welcome Mr. Benedetto Della Vedova, Under Secretary of State, speaking on behalf of the Presidency of the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe. Mr. Della Vedova, we are very pleased to have you with us today in this exchange of views. The Italian Presidency of the Committee of Ministers has the lead at a very difficult time for Europe and humanity. After the pandemic crisis in Europe, the Italian Presidency is now facing 